So it's been a little over three months since I purchased my 2020 Tesla Model 3. Uh, it's a long range version, so it gets around 322 miles. If I'm gonna charge it you know, on a daily basis, charging up to around 290 miles, and I've been charging it so far without any in-home charging. So just bring it to the supercharger whenever I get a free minute um, or on the way back from work. Uh, in the three months I've had it, I've been working from home for the most part, so I've only really put around a thousand miles on the car. So I haven't been needing to charge it that much, but when I do, it's been at the supercharger um, and I was able to get with uh, buying the car with a referral, um, I was able to get the free 1000 supercharger miles. So I've pretty much gone through all of those I've gotten a few extra thousand miles from some other referrals, which has been really awesome. So I can definitely use the supercharger network that's in and around the area to charge up when needed. I have one right by my work, one right by my house, so it's really, really convenient. But at the same time, it's definitely worth getting some in-home charging set up. And I went ahead and did that recently. And this is what I ended up getting installed. So you have a 200 amp service in the house. Um, and I wanted to get just a regular 220 volt outlet. Um, I decided on going with a 650 NEMA connector rather than the 1450, just for convenience sake, you can use it for some other things, uh, welders, things like that. So I went with this connector and with either the 650 or the 1450, you can top off uh, at around 30 miles per hour uh, charging capacity using the Gen 2 connector. So here we have our Gen 2 mobile connector with our 650 NEMA connector. Um, and of course you can buy any of these from Tesla. They're around 35 bucks. Get the 1450, all the 30 amp connectors as well. Anything uh, that you would wanna upgrade the mobile connector, you can definitely buy from Tesla, which is where I bought this one. And if we head over to the car, of course we can just pop uh, the charge cap up with the connector, plug it in. It should be charging relatively soon. There we go, charging. So we'll hop inside. And as you guys can see, we are definitely charging. So we have 82 miles currently. Um, I have my capacity set to around 290, which is pretty much the max for like daily charging uh, or daily capacity. If you wanted to go on like a full day trip, of course you do have the 322 mile range of the long range model three. But for my daily usage, 290 miles is just plenty. Gets me through a couple of days. So as you can see right now, we're charging at around 25 miles an hour. That may pick up a little bit. Normally I'll see around 28 uh, to 29 miles an hour. Um, but you can see charging at 32 amps and 225 volts. So of course, with the Gen 2 mobile connector, you're sort of capped out to 32 amps. And right now we're only getting 21 miles an hour mainly because I'm sitting in the car and all the accessories are on. Uh, once I get out of the car, I'll show you guys my phone and you'll see we're charging at around 28 to 29 miles an hour. And it'll take around seven and a half hours to charge from 80 miles up to 290. So now that I'm out of the car and everything is turned off, as you guys can see, we're getting 28 miles per hour, same voltage, same current, and it'll take us seven hours and five minutes to charge. So with a seven hour charge time, I'll normally plug my Model 3 in at around like nine, 10 o'clock at night, and it'll finish charging by like four or 5 a.m. And that's perfect. It's during, you know, low demand on the electric utility. Um, so prices are normally like 50% or a little bit lower um, compared to, you know, peak demand. So you're definitely not gonna see as big of a hit on your electricity bill. Um, and I ended up going with the 220 volt outlet rather than the Tesla wall connector. First off for price, of course, the wall connector is an extra 500 additional dollars. And for the 44 miles per hour versus the 30 miles an hour, you also are required to get a higher amp breaker. So I, I believe you need a 100 amp breaker for the wall connector to achieve that 44 mile an hour charge capacity. Um, installation would be more costly. So overall from you know 44 miles per hour to 30 miles an hour, you're saving maybe around two hours of charge time, but charging overnight, you're not gonna really see any of that time. So it didn't make a lot of sense to me um, to get the wall connector for that reason. First of all, one of the other reasons we of course went with the 220 volt outlet rather than the wall connector is just future proofing. Um, so of course, if we went with the wall connector, we would get higher charge rate. Doesn't really matter in my particular case, 
but you're also you know limiting yourself to only being able to charge a tesla vehicle whereas with the 220 volt outlet you should be able to charge most electric cars depending of course what comes with the car and what connectors they make available to you but with plenty of new ev companies coming out like rivian and others and with most pre-existing automakers like bmw ford mercedes all coming out with either hybrids or full electric vehicles, you know, you're gonna wanna future-proof a little bit. Other people in the household are gonna eventually own electric cars. I won't be the only one with my Tesla. So of course, this gives us the ability to sort of just be able to charge uh, a multitude of cars. You're only gonna have one outlet, but you can charge several different cars. You're not limiting yourself to only being able to charge a Tesla. So there we have it guys, a quick video from the garage, but wanted to give you an overall idea as to why I did not go with the Tesla wall connector and why I went with a regular 220 volt outlet. Of course, price, installation, labor, parts are all gonna be more expensive. Uh, future proofing for future EVs inside the household, maybe you know replacing a Tesla with a different EV down the road. Um, and then of course, 14 miles of extra charge isn't super enticing when you're already hitting the 30 mile an hour charge mark. Um, being able to charge overnight is really all I need. And with a seven hour charge time, the extra 14 miles per hour doesn't really add anything for me personally. But if you do need to charge a little bit quicker or you want you know, slightly quicker charge times, you can definitely go ahead, spend the extra $500, get the wall connector. But for the reasons I stated, I just went with a 220 outlet. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, any comments about this process or anything else about the Model 3, be sure to leave those below.